So the vertex is the highest point. And well, in this case, it's the highest point because this is a frown. So what is this point right here? I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a red dot. What is that point? What's the order pair for that red dot? Negative one, four. So is that a maximum or a minimum? Max, because it's the top. All right, the axis of symmetry is always the same number as this x value in your vertex. So if my x value is negative one, that means that if I draw a line right here, that line is gonna divide it in half. So x equals negative one is your um, axis of symmetry. Your y-intercept is right here. And that point on the y-axis is zero, three. And what's happening to my arrows? Are they going up or down? So you're gonna put a negative infinity on both of these because they're both going down. And then lastly, you have your x-intercepts and there's two. I'm gonna put green dots right here. And what are those two x values where I put those two green dots? Negative three and what else? and one. Who had all of those right? <laughs> Excuse me, thank you. All right, so now let's go to our note packet and let's go to page three. And let's do the same for this parabola. So your vertex, I'm gonna zoom in really closely right here. You can see how we're counting by two. So that's my vertex. So it looks like your X value would be about negative three and your Y value is positive three. So you have a vertex at negative three, three. That's your vertex. An axis of symmetry is going to be where you have your um, the X value. Those are the handouts from yesterday, Kaden. I don't know if you were here yesterday, but all three of those handouts on that desk. All right, so that would be the X value of your axis of symmetry. So that would be X equals negative three. So if you draw a vertical line right down the middle, that's negative three. All right, what about your y-intercept? I'm gonna zoom in really closely. It looks to me like it's about right there. So what's my y-intercept? It's at 12. And you're in behavior because both sides are going up would be positive infinity for both. Okay, so a big part of this next quiz is graphing a quadratic. So the first thing we're going to do right here, where it says we're going to find the axis of symmetry. So if you don't have a graph, if you have an equation, this is how you, if you have the equation for the quadratic, you're going to find your axis of symmetry. This is the equation to find your axis of symmetry, and this is going to be on the test, so you don't have to memorize it. All right, so let's go ahead and do this one together. What is A in this quadratic? The number in front of X squared is what? A is one. What's B? And what's C? Okay. So a couple of things. First of all, whatever this number is here, that's your y-intercept. So I know that my y-intercept is going to be zero, negative six. So we can graph that right now. 
The C value is your y-intercept. So let's go ahead and put a point at negative six. All right, so now let's find the axis of symmetry. So here's the formula. This is your formula, x equals opposite of b divided by 2a. So to find your axis of symmetry, thank you, it's going to be x equals, so do you see how b is a positive 2? The opposite of positive 2 is negative 2. So put negative 2 at the top. And then that's multiplied by 2 times a, and we said that A is one. So our axis of symmetry is going to be at negative two divided by two. So if you need to in your calculators, take negative two and divide that by two. What is negative two divided by two? Okay. So I want you to put that negative one right here. So now let's find the y value. So pick up your calculators. In your calculator, you're gonna put in a negative one where you see x. So this is how you're gonna type this in your calculator. You're gonna type it in as y equals, and then parentheses squared plus two parentheses minus six. I want you to type it in exactly like that with the parentheses and everything. Go ahead and type that in your calculators. So put in your calculator, negative one squared plus two times negative one minus six. I'll just retype it in because I don't have my key. Negative one squared plus two times negative one minus six. All right, who got negative seven? Anybody else get that? All right, good. So that means that we have a point at negative one, negative seven. So let's go ahead and put that in our in our table on our graph. So let's put a point. So negative one, go down to negative seven. Put a point right there. All right, so now let's go ahead and use our chart. Let's fill in the rest. So I already know, so from this point, I want you to count. When you're looking at your number line, you see how negative one on our number line is right here. So this is my negative one, that's my vertex. So I want you to count back negative two, negative three. So go ahead and put negative two, negative three in your table. So we're gonna count backwards. Negative two, negative three. And then we're also going to, from the negative one, we're gonna count forward, zero, one. row one now we already know the y value when x is zero what did i say my y value was when x was zero what is the y value when x is zero looking at my y intercept so we can put our negative six right here all right pick up your calculators and let's figure out the other <coughs> three points. So you're going to type in your calculator. This is our quadratic function. So pick up your calculators. The first number I want you to put in is a one. Go ahead, put in one. Type that in your calculator just like that to get one. Just to get your first y value.
What'd you all get? Who else got negative three? All right, so let's put that in our table. All right, now let's go back. We gotta do the same thing. This time we're gonna put in negative two. Type that in, negative two. Did you get negative six? Good. That's looking good, because remember, a parabola is symmetrical. And let's go ahead and double check, but let's, what do you think we're gonna type in next? What's the only number we're missing? All right, go ahead and do negative three. get negative three all right so notice how in this parabola if you have your vertex that's why we put this vertex in the middle these numbers should repeat because it's symmetrical so the number directly to the left and the right the y value directly to the left and right of the vertex should be the same and this should be the same so let's go ahead and graph all of these points we already have two of them it should look like a smile. So let's go ahead and graph it. Let's put our other points down. So positive one, negative three. That should be your graph. Does this vertex, is this vertex a minimum or a maximum? Who says minimum? Who says maximum? All right, this is actually a minimum. This vertex is a minimum. Okay, when you look at these values of the y, this negative seven is the lowest value. It's the bottom. So if this is, it's a cup, it's a smile. So that has a minimum point. All right, let's go ahead and graph our next one. Let's look at example four. So step number one is always to find your vertex. So A is two, B is negative eight, and C is positive two. So let's find our vertex. Oh, sorry, I was supposed to put those down here. So two, negative eight, and two. Now we can find the y-intercept without graphing anything. Which one of these numbers is my y-intercept? C. So let's go ahead and write that here. Note, C is the y-intercept. So let's go ahead and put that point right here, 0, 2. 0, C. That's what that is. All right, so let's go ahead and find our vertex. So the first step is to find the axis of symmetry. That should say x equals, not y equals. So x equals, now it's always the opposite of b. You see how that has a minus sign in front? So if b is negative eight, put a positive eight upstairs. So everybody put a positive eight upstairs. And that's divided by two times A. And what is A? Two. So what's eight divided by four? 
Let me go ahead and write this out. Eight divided by four is not four, two, good. So put a two right here for this first X coordinate. So now we need to find the Y value. Okay, so my quadratic function, for example, four, it says two X squared, so we have a two and then we have parentheses squared minus eight parentheses plus two. This is what we're gonna use. The first number that I want you to substitute in is a two. So we can find our vertex. So go ahead and substitute in a two. Type that in your calculator, just like that. What do you all get? Because I don't have my um, calculator or I don't have my notes. What did you get for your bottom of the vertex, your y value for your vertex? What did you get? What did you get, Steven? Negative six. Anybody else get negative six? Raise your hand if you got negative six. All right. So in the middle of our chart, I want you to go ahead. So let's put that two negative six. So put two negative six in the middle. That's the middle. Now let's go to our number line. So it says pick two numbers to the left and two numbers to the right. So this is my two, this is two. Let's hop backwards, so one, zero. So put a one, zero. And then you're gonna count up. So what numbers am I gonna put at the top? Three, four. Now pick up your calculators. Can you put that away for me? And I want you to really quickly start typing in these remaining values. So let's start off with four. Put a four in. See what you get for four. And then you're gonna put in a three. Then you're gonna put in a one, and we'll talk about that zero. All right, what'd you get for four? Cortez, what'd you get for four? For four. Yeah. Uh-oh. Two. two, okay. Anybody else get two? Do we agree with it? Okay, good. What about three? Who has the answer for three? Did we try three yet? All right, if you haven't already, go ahead and put in a three. That's your next step. Put in a three. And then you're gonna put in one, and then you're gonna put in zero. So fill in your whole chart and start plotting your points. Let's see what you get. Those two don't look right. Yeah, do those again. 
Yeah. And if your Y values aren't repeating, then you know you did it wrong. Because you should have some repeating numbers for Y. So that's the easy part about a parabola is that you you know you should you can kind of check yourself so i know that whatever i get for four i should get the same thing for zero these two numbers should be the same and then did you say it was negative four so that should be my values who who agrees with my table who had that all right let's go ahead and plot it so let's put a point at four up to, and then three, we're gonna go down four. And then we go all the way down to negative six, then we come back up. So is this a minimum or a maximum? Minimum because it's a smile. So this vertex, I want you to go ahead and write this is a minimum because that's one of the questions you're going to be asked on the quiz next week. If it's a minimum or a maximum. All right, I'm going to end there. So you should be able to do the entire backside of your homework. So homework one, I'm going to stamp it and I'll pass out the stamp sheets for this semester. For those of you who are new to me, I don't collect homework. We just stamp. But use this time to work on the backside of homework one. So I want you to practice graphing those three quadratics. And if you need help, Let's start number six together, actually. Let's just go ahead and start number six together. <clears throat> 